Hello and welcome to another amazing dancing dialogue with my very dear friend in Spain. Georgia is here again with me today. And not only being here, but being here with me in the rain. Now, for many cultures, the rain is a very beautiful thing. They say in India that if you have a special celebration, such as a wedding or as a coming together, the rain in a way opens up and seals the blessing. So I feel the rain is a blessing in our, in our dancing dialogue today. That in a way I feel is based in the relationships, Georgia, yeah, as usual, because I think that's our theme. But yet we're taking this in another direction, into this expression of the heart, without measures, without labels, without thinking. So where does that theme that we have already created, where does that energy take you now, Georgia? I'm very curious. Uh, you know, we, we all need each other, but not in that needy way. We all want to communicate and connect with each other. Humans have this strong desire in them to reach out, to be part of, to be close to one or ten or hundreds of people. Each one of us are different and at different stages in our lives too. But that connection, you know, of sharing and caring comes from the heart. You don't, you don't need to think about it. As we were saying earlier, you know, we have more in common than we have different, but even those differences are attractive too. Yeah, so beautiful. It is really the heart that expresses. When it goes through the filter of the mind, we want measures. And today we also talk a little bit about business with each other, about clients and proposals and connecting. And we are both in a space we actually don't resist to encourage to share our enthusiasm with our clients for where they are at and where they can go, although we don't define where they can go. And I would like you to share maybe one of your examples where you open space, you encouraged, you brought your enthusiasm, your love for what people face when they're writing a book and how you encourage them, how you compliment them and make that space to where they need to go so maybe an example would be very nice today well it is about encouragement and everybody has something beautiful about them something amazing something unique that sometimes they can't see and but i see it as the objective person with the professional eye and looking at that person and in fact it was this woman who wrote this book who's just published the book we had a conversation, we did a video about it, which will be out next week. Beautiful. And it was all about this amazing qualifications and professional achievements and accomplishments that she had in her life. And I said to her, well, why aren't you talking about them? Why aren't you writing about them? She goes, oh, nobody's gonna be interested. I said, I'm interested. I want you to write me the list. So she sent me the list and I'm like, what? This is fantastic. You've done this. This is amazing. You've got to discuss this. You've got to tell people about this. These are, this is what gives you so much credibility. This is what will connect and resonate with people when they read that you went through it when you were doing this. And so my task is to encourage you to bring out the best in you, to bring out all those fantastic things that you've done in your life that you've put aside, you've forgotten about because Maybe somebody put you down even, you didn't even compliment you on it. I said, well, yeah, so what? But you need to big yourself up, as we say. You need to make yourself feel good. And, you know, you are the one that created these things. That's fantastic. Feel good about it. So to encourage somebody, to compliment them, to make them feel good, is just, it's just the most beautiful experience to see it. You know, somebody comes on and they're like, well, I don't think I could do this. 
And then you say to them, of course you can. Look what you've done. Look what you've said. Look what you've written. And at the end, they're like, oh. and they go away feeling good. So it's like double pleasure. <laughs> yes. And, and, and yeah, I have very similar experiences as yours with clients that come to me who are stuck somewhere, who don't see beyond, who feel they are limited. Of course, in my case, it's more in the dimensions of consciousness and healing and whatever we want to call it, or also being stuck in business. Of course, I have also these people, entrepreneurs who are not believing in themselves, very similar to the one who was writing a book. And then you say, but look, you can. And as you are talking, you know, it reminds me in New Zealand and I'm a New Zealander. I lived there long enough and I was teaching, lecturing at university. And one of the things, although I taught mainly international students, some of the locals, the Kiwis, the Maori and the Pacific Islanders who are more, well, Pacific Islanders not really native, but still they're part of that more original community. There's a saying in New Zealand that says, because you can. And what it means is exactly that point, Georgia, that it seems maybe impossible. I forgot about all the things that I can do. But what they mean by because you can is that encouragement, as you were mentioning, to say, hey, but it looks to me you are capable, not the measures, not the labels. It's not about who you are with all these identity labels, traps, whatever you in your uniqueness, you can. So Patrick, I've got a question for you. Yes. And that is, that is if, because we all need encouragement. And maybe you don't like the word need. Change it for whatever word fits, want, desire. Yeah, whatever. But What's need is not a bad word. No, it's not. It's not but a bad word. But my question to you then is that when you desire encouragement, what do you do? Where do you turn? What, who do you ask? What do you look for? <laughs> That's a beautiful question. Um, of course, when you have a partner, both of us are blessed with, with, with a partner in our lives. Um, I, we have a little code. And it means more than the words. When I call her, hey, beautiful, and she answers me, hey, handsome, it is not about the physical or whatever. It is a code that we have developed with each other to encourage each other. It's not even about the word beautiful and handsome. It is about knowing that we are both capable of being who we meant to be. It's, um, it's a compliment to our uniqueness. So this is maybe one encouragement that I can get very easily. Um, otherwise, I have great conversations with lovely emerging archetypes like yourself, people who have the courage to be who they truly are from the heart. And yeah, that, that I would say is my, my encouragement on a very private, but also on a bigger level. And of course, I don't live on social media, but sometimes when you get a nice comment and you accepting mm. that compliment of having created something beautiful, I think acceptance in general, I think we get more compliments and encouragement than we think because our heart is not open to accept. And you and I are dancing in this kind of, I want to call it reality. A very relational reality of relating to people from the heart. And we talked earlier as well, and you had another word and I let you share that. It's like we have a box of tricks. You and I are blessed to have had a number of years on the planet we have 
been learning, unlearning, we have been unlocking, we have a box full of tricks. And I feel it's so beautiful that we can just pick it and I'm, I'm looking at my flutes, I can pick a flute. I have another box of tricks that is obviously invisible. But I feel when you reach that kind of stage where you know it's all there and you don't have to prove anything anymore and you're not resisting anymore to what you should be or shouldn't be, you can just pull it and bring it out and express it through the heart. And this applies in our business and this applies in our life. And you had something very beautiful metaphorically because we love metaphorically. What you tell your clients. What is your box of tricks? <laughs> well, you know, it is, it is based on that encouragement level you know about encouraging that person who needs a little bit of a push a nudge a shift a reframe a revise a revamp choose your words you know and you see it you see there's a resistance they're holding back and you know that they need the accountability that's the that's the open word you can use but the other word is they need that little nudge you know and so i say with lightness and humor i have this box of whips beside me now they come in all colors pinks and blues and ones with sparkles which one would you like and the idea is it's you know a push of encouragement a little tough love you know and they always laugh they always laugh and they say oh i want the blue one you know because they want that they need that we are like kids. We yes. want that encouragement in our lives. We want to be told, you can do it. Yeah. Come on now, I'm going to give you that push you need. And here's a little little something to encourage you. Yeah. yeah, I love that metaphor of the whip as well. It's so light. It's so, it's funny in a way. Yeah. And I, I really feel this encouragement is like that colorful whip that takes us into that new level of, being self and also what you've said so beautifully it it is like a trigger for self-love mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. are we not all deprived of self-love so if somebody can come and give us a whip or a little trick out of the treasure box isn't that what we all need to walk on our own feet we both don't want to work with people forever because we want to create the accountability and the encouragement and trust in their own ability to walk on their own. Exactly. It's about building their confidence because when they recognize their skills and their abilities, I see this in the, in the writing of the book at the beginning, they're not confident, they don't have that courage, they doubt their creativity and by the end of it, that personal journey of recognizing your skills and your your uniqueness and writing it down and sending it out to the world has most amazing benefits emotionally, psychologically, never mind for your business. And that's what it's about. It's the confidence that you say, I've done this now. I've done it. And yeah. you can. You really, yeah. really can. And I feel if we can only light up that spark within that makes people not makes people that allows people to trust i can do that that confidence then we have done a good job whether it's the people who are writing a book whether it's the clients who are stuck and want to advance in their business and show their light more or they're stuck in their personal situations and want to step forward into that creativeness and uniqueness from the heart it's all the same at the end and then that level of needing somebody who has the whip or the trick it's perfect as it helps us all to come on our feet 
and to recognize that we we can do it we are capable of doing it because we're often very good at encouraging others and we we need it too you know even in those little ways that you mentioned before those coded words that we use um the, the, the little phrases the you know the nicknames that's the word i'm looking for the little nicknames that we have for each other which have lots of different meanings and and it, you, you hear it and think hmm. yes really. <laughs> I, I feel that little coding even goes into when we write proposals yes. so i feel you and i are unique in that way i don't have a program particular program I have a lot of things and out of all this we listen from the heart and we create a proposal you do that very similar in your field and so I feel when people feel that little code and when you create a little code with them that gives that encouragement that triggers the self-love and that enthusiasm of being that light that they are, we're doing a good job. Yes. And it shows that you are paying attention to them, which we all need. It's, it's that whole thing of the self-love. You're paying attention to them. You are giving them your attention and showing you understand what they're saying, what they need and what they want. Bit by bit sometimes, but... That paying attention, paying is a funny word, but giving attention, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's crucial. It's like if you look, if you talk to somebody and you're looking away all the time, you feel, wait, wait, wait a minute, what's going on? You want to have that full contact and recognition that you're there, the listening, the, the full attention, that's the word. <laughs> yeah, attention is another word that I find absolutely crucial in the client relation in the personal relationships in the business relationships in the relationships with your country with your world with the community wherever and it comes down really to one thing paying attention giving attention being present and here and not thinking about what am I going to say next how do I going to push my whatever thing through? How do I achieve my measures, my labels? How do I push somebody else into a label? Giving attention means just being here. Now, I take us a lot into this, a little bit into the spiritual realm. One of the guys I really admire, already passed, is Ramana Maharashi. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but Ramana Maharashi is one of these Advaita practitioners who at a very young age of 17 almost died then he just left his home took whatever money he could and started a center very close to what's today Chennai in the middle of nowhere and his teaching is about self-inquiry going within connecting to the nothingness and the wholeness and the uniqueness but over the years of his teaching what he said is the key to everything is what you just said it's mm -hmm. the attention so whether you are on a spiritual quest or a consciousness quest a quest in your business or to unleash your uniqueness it's the attention that you give or pay to someone else and of course to yourself this is not ego And it's part of the self-love and self-care, big part of it. And that giving attention is actually also making space for the other or a group, because sometimes you and I are teaching more than one, to be present to that self-love. Give a moment of silence even to be present and pay attention to your self-love, the love for self. And as this connection is happening, we are feeling that I can, and you have the encouragement all around you. 
Yeah, what can I say? Powerful. Very powerful because you see the you see the results. I mean, I see it when one of my clients now has an extraordinary ability to express herself through words, but has suffered too much, too much drama going on and lack of confidence in herself. And so when I say things like, but you have this dazzling ability with words. And there's this, yes, there's this, whew, you're right. Sometimes you have to give a lot of it. <laughs> and, you know, day in, day out, because it subsides. But it still gives me pleasure to give it. Yes. Giving the attention. And, you know? I, and so yeah. it's, we feed, we give to each other like that. And I think that's a very powerful thing in all relationships. Yes. You know, whether they're clients or they're friends or like us, working together, sharing, you know, our abilities. It is that give and take, the pull, the yes. listening, the receiving, the giving. And also the weaving and, and, and letting go, not being attached to what comes out of it, but just allowing it to actually be. I think that is just so important. And as you said, as we are starting to accept and encourage from the heart, what is happening, people really get that spark, they get that boost. And if we have a code with them, they even get it better and they step out of the drama. I'm not the victim. Yes, life can be very daunting. Yes, life can put you down. Yes, we can carry many, many bad experiences, traumas, whatever we want to call it. But our essence is never damaged. And I feel both of us, and this is where we also spark so much, we find that essence. I could always see the light in others because I look with the heart. And if we can light up that light in the heart, then it is easier to make peace with all of the things that stop us. The labels, the expectations, the bad experiences. The moment we can remember and others helping us to remember, it's much easier. Yeah, what a blessing to dialogue with you, Georgia. <laughs> it is just so incredibly beautiful. So maybe today it's also about us letting the audience know we are here. We are here. Very present, very aware and very ready to pay attention to those who want to be here. Whether it's Listen. writing a book, stepping out of your limitations and your traumas and whatever, we are here. And all these experiences, I mean, I always say with the writing, writing is cathartic. Expressing yourself through the arts, as both of us are known, we've been in it all our lives. You know, it's the most wonderful way to release, to unchain, to unburden, to express yourself, to expose, you know, all these things by using an artistic, or a creative, let's use the word creative way, to show your uniqueness. I just love that. Yeah, I think it's it's at the heart. And and you know, we can write heart with a capital A in the center and get also the yes. art. Yes, it's wonderful, beautiful. And I feel it's that power to create that creativeness that allows us really to express even what sometimes we seem to not being allowed to express through words and voice. The writing is not always published. 
And, you know, in the shamanic traditions, one of the most beautiful things is to write all the things that you don't need anymore. Completing a cycle, even your book of fate and karma, you write it and you put it into the fire. Very powerful. Very cathartic. <laughs> yes, and I, I really feel that in any way we use that uniqueness to create and express because creation is expression we are actually allowing ourselves to be who we truly are and to facilitate that to spark that to bring some funny codes and metaphors that is our job mm -hmm. yours and mine and of course many others And I feel it's also for us important that we encourage each other to do that. Spread it. Let people know it's it's okay. It's good. <laughs> it's healthy. <laughs> yeah, and, and for others to know it's okay, it's healthy, it's who we are. And it brings wonderful rewards to everybody. Beyond measure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I almost feel this dialogue is, is so expansive that it actually comes to an end because there is more to come as always. I really want to say how much I appreciate doing these dancing dialogues with you. It's like we've known each other all of our lives. And I feel the kindred spirit and soul here that is on a very similar mission to bring encouragement, to bring enthusiasm, to allow people to click and come into their own uniqueness and light. So, Georgia, you are just amazing. What can I say? Thank you, thank you, Patrick, for giving us, me, this opportunity to spread these beautiful thoughts and, and a healthy way of connecting. Because if more of us do it like this, there would be less war. <laughs> I don't think there would be any. No, not at all. Being what are you fighting for <laughs> if you have so much to connect to? So thank you for, you know, giving me this opportunity to share with you from the heart, my thoughts, my ideas, my ways of expressing myself, because it, it gives me, I, you know, I shall be dancing for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and with that, we're making space for others. And I think this is also important because really, it's not about us. And yet we are a crucial part in that. And I want to thank you for that because these are the rising archetypes. These are the new gold prints making space for self and others. So for today, blessings to Spain, a beautiful night. And over and, there in Peru. <laughs> and we'll catch up really soon. Thank you so much. Yes.